Thank you for viewing this video on my experience of familial spiritual abuse. Um, obviously, you must have some sort of seeking heart to try to figure out, okay, there's something wrong. There's so much cognitive dissonance, you know, I'm, I'm doubting myself and I'm doubting, you know, my value in my family. I, I don't feel heard. I feel like they don't, they don't really genuinely care that they're using me. You know, all these different feelings of, I know that there's something wrong, but is it me? Is it truly me the way that they say it is? Is it me or is it, is it them? Or is it one person in particular that you just haven't been able to put your finger on, but there's something wrong. And based on your research, you know, whether it be um, articles online or you're watching, binge watching YouTube videos about narcissistic abuse. Based on your research, you're finding that you can relate to a lot of what people are saying out there. So as you are listening and coming with me on this, um, this little, little bitty message of, I don't know, um, encouragement and, um, yeah, I guess encouragement. You're basically you're you're clicking on this video is is a form of validation of my rough and troubling and discouraging and defeating experiences. A form of uh support to release what's been occupying my thoughts since since I even became aware that you know, my point of reference for a family was not normal or healthy what they were doing and saying covertly was not normal or healthy compared to other families that are just normal. Um, but I also feel I, as, as though I can, I can be painfully honest about the ugly truth regarding abuse that has been, um, has had more lasting damage I, I feel than even physical abuse that I also endured. Um, to any family members or friends that may be watching this, um, I just want you to know that I love you despite of the wedge that distances us. And um, even if we never speak again, I'll still love you. Even if you don't agree and you talk about me behind my back to my fam to the rest of the family, I still love you. Even if you share this video on Facebook and, you know, and you criticize me and, and you go home and you go to our parents and you, or, or you, or, you know, you go to the rest of the family, you just dissect it piece by piece and how wrong I am and how, how rebellious I'm being, I'll still love you. Um, but right now, after, after all the research and reflecting that I've done over narcissistic abuse, spiritual abuse, emotional abuse. I feel really empowered to share my path of, I guess, reconstructing, you know, reconstruction or reconstitution with anyone who'll listen. And when I say reconstitution, I mean anyone who understands who's done their research on, you know, abuse, especially regarding dysfunctional families with, you know, one of the parents being the narcissist they under, you understand that there's a lot of just training from, from a young age, just filling your being with lies and with a lot of um, unhealthy behavior that to the outsider may, may, be, may look, you know, maybe a little bit weird, but you know, that's just the way they choose to raise their children. They're just, they just choose to be really tough on them, you know, because they love them. That's the genuine, genuine, um, general view on the outside but um i would say that i'm going through a lot of reconstitution to recognize that you know number one i was i was sought out i was set apart as the one who would be you know first i was the i you know as you know as these narcissistic terms come up you know um, Psych, I mean, psychiatric terms come up, you know, in regards to a dysfunctional family. There's the, the golden child, 
And then there's the scapegoat. So at first I was the golden child. I was the child that said, I mean, the, the child that, you know, the narcissist in my family was, I mean, this was my father. He said, he would always say when I was really young, and I remember this so clearly, he would always say to the other children, okay, everyone needs to go upstairs and clean their room with the exception of Alexis. With the exception of Alexis. So there was, there was an obvious setting me apart as someone undeservedly. I, I did wrong just like everyone else in my family. I was disobedient. I did wrong. I did things I, I was told not to do. I talked back. But rarely, as the youngest, I learned a lot from the way that they were, that they were disciplined. My older, older siblings, they would... But he, but he would say this, he would say this all the time with the exception of Alexis, because I, because I, I was the quiet one for a time. I was the sensitive one, the one who didn't want to, to disobey my parents, the one who genuinely wanted to be a good, be a good kid. I wanted to please them. I didn't want them to be disappointed in me. I wanted to do well. And it didn't make sense within my being. I was like, I don't want to be a bad kid. So they saw they saw that. I would say my my dad saw that. And he would he set me apart from a very young age. Um so in that time the I would say that he was molding me to become this this golden child to always do good in school, to be the one. Who, and of course, you know, it each one of us had our own thing where we were, you know, there's four of us. So I'm the young, I'm the youngest. My brother as the oldest, he was also a golden child, you know, for a while. Cause he did a bunch, he did sports and he played instruments and he wanted to go to college and wanted to do all these good things, got, got good grades. He was an artist. And then my sister, she was an athlete, you know, and she, she got good grades, wanted to go to medical school. She was perfect ever. And he would always say about her, Everyone, everyone needs to be like her. Everyone needs to keep her, keep, keep this one in mind because she's, she's going on the right track. But then I have another sister and this is where the scapegoat comes in because he would always, he would always just bag on her, just dump all this, these insults and just criticize her all the time. And and I, I, as an example, he would say things like, you know, um, she's the rebe she's just being rebellious, you know, she every because she's she's very opinionated. She's she's an independent person. She has opinions and she doesn't like when things are not right, when things are not equal. So and, you know, and she sometimes would talk back, but she just had this attitude whenever she would get, you know, spankings. And of course, spankings was a form of spiritual abuse because he would he would use the physical to reach the spiritual because he would always quote the verse in the bible about you know sparing the rod and how we need to discipline our children and but it was all he always did an excess he always spanked us an excess for everything if something came up missing everyone got whooped if we went outside and we weren't supposed to everyone got whooped like really hard really bad for the, for a long time um, but anyway, but he would, but he would always talk about how she was rebellious and, at, and, and she would act out in school because he was always talking about how she was just, she just wouldn't, she just didn't have good grades. She just wouldn't, wouldn't obey, wouldn't, wouldn't follow in line with what they were telling us to do. So she would get, they, you know, she would get bad grades. And at one point they actually sent her away to boot camp. I guess to get reprogrammed because she wasn't falling in line. And when she came back initially, it was like, yeah, she's doing great. She's, she's obeying. She's not causing any trouble. She's not yelling, but it was, but we could tell that that was only going to last for a little bit because she wanted to be as, as normal human beings. We want to be individuals, but we couldn't. We weren't allowed to be. So I guess this is just, I want to, you know, try to keep this short as a lot of, 
a lot of narcissist videos are, are pretty long and and they're very helpful they're they're full of um, connection and full of um, real facts and real um, experiences which is really helpful um, but I guess I wanted to contribute to that because I feel like there is there there are all always some aspects that haven't been discussed always some aspects of this issue that that someone else could relate to on a different level not everything is always going to be between a husband and a wife not all narcissistic relationships are always oh i dated a narcissist most of the narcissistic abuse comes from a parent to a child and even so when the when one of the children becomes narcissistic it's from the one of the children to the other in their behavior so i just wanted to keep it short um feel free to comment um, give me feedback like or discuss or share i'll try to keep these videos kind of short but anyway but that's my experience my i guess part one for right now so thank you for watching and i'll see you soon <laughs>